Hello world. If you are a long time Linux enthusiast, you might have known the fact that Linux was actually developed to be a desktop operating system. Back in early 1990s, commercial desktop operating system options were very limited and costly, placing them out of reach for many customers. While Linux initially gained popularity among tech peoples, unfortunately it faced lots of challenges competing with dominant players like Microsoft and Apple in the desktop market. As a result, Linux became relegated to a niche choice for a select group of users. However, major corporations like IBM recognized Linux's potential leading to its adoption in business environments and academic research settings. But now recently, Linux has started gaining popularity again and in the meantime has achieved a big milestone as well. According to StatCounter, which is a website that tracks the market share of web browsers, operating systems, and search engines. As of February 2024, Linux for the first time has gained 4.3% of the desktop operating system market share. So this begs important questions like, is Linux finally breaking out of shadows and becoming a mainstream contender? And most importantly, is this the year of Linux? Before we get too excited, it is essential to address two crucial questions. Firstly, let us find how StatCounter collected this data. StatCounter gathers desktop operating system uses statistics from tracking codes installed on over 1.5 million global websites, generating over 5 billion monthly page views. However, it is important to note that this data is not directly sourced from the end users. Secondly, how reliable this data is. So, StatCounter acknowledges that it may revise its data within 45 days of publication, meaning we will have to wait until May 2024 to assess whether Linux's market share remains consistent or not. But as a Linux lover, I am hopeful that Linux's trajectory will continue upwards, outpacing both Windows and Mac OS. Setting speculation aside, let us examine the situation. There is no denying that Linux's market share has steadily increased in recent years. Looking back over the past 5 years, the growth of Linux is significant. In February 2019, Linux held a mere 1.58% of the market share, which climbed to 3% by June 2023, and now have surpassed the 4% mark within 8 months. Steve Von Nichols, a senior editor in ZDNet.com, identified 5 key factors which are driving this growth. So let's look at them. One of the biggest contributors to the growth of Linux is likely the stringent hardware requirements of Windows 11 forced by Microsoft. When Windows 11 was launched, Microsoft made it mandatory for computers to have support of TPM version 2.0 chip on user motherboards, which many did not have, including myself. Users without this hardware had to remain on Windows 10, which was released back in 2015. But things become much worse when on May 2021, Microsoft also announced that they will end the support of Windows 10 by October 2025. I have already made a video about this Windows 11 debacle, so you can check that video as well. Apart from this Windows 11 mess up, you will also notice that Microsoft is not any more concerned about Windows the operating system. As these days, Microsoft's biggest profits come from its Azure Cloud Service and Software as a Service programs, particularly Microsoft 365. Steam is the most popular gaming platform in the world. With the advent of Steam Deck, thanks to Valve, as well as SteamOS and Proton Project, gaming scene for Linux has changed completely. Gamers slowly but steadily are adopting Linux as their daily driver, and more and more games are getting native Linux support. Linux distributions such as Nabora OS and Garuda Linux are also created completely keeping gaming and gamers in mind. Even now, you will find many people insisting that Linux is much hard to use or master than Windows or Mac OS. It is also true to some extent, particularly if you want to be a Linux power user. But if all you want is to walk and play, then many Linux distributions are very easy to use and are suitable for beginners just like Windows and Mac operating system. For example, Linux Mint, Zorin OS or even Elementary OS are very simple and easy to use and it is a great end-user operating system for anyone and everyone. While some years ago, software installation in Linux was not that easy, 
But now, universal containerized installation programs such as Flatpak, Snaps, and AppImage have made it very simple. For users, that means they get more and more programs to choose from, and they do not need to worry about finicky installation details. And with the shift towards the online computing, more and more software vendors are releasing their apps on Linux. This final point is the one which I am most excited to discuss. Steven mentioned that India has gained a large number of Linux users and I am quoting his words. In India, Windows is still the number one operating system with 70.37%, but number two is Linux with 15.23%. macOS is way back in fourth place with 3.11%. I suspect this is the case because India's economy is largely based on technology. Where you find serious programmers, you find Linux users. So as an Indian myself, I am particularly proud to see that my country is playing a pivotal role in Linux's growth. But believe me, I am not surprised at all upon seeing this result. Because in countries like India, or you can take the whole Indian subcontinent in this context, here not everyone can afford an Apple's PC or laptop. And buying a new computer every few years is not an usual norm here. Here PCs and laptops are considered as assets. And I am saying this for the majority of the people. Even though there are people who can afford them, but not everyone. So when Microsoft forced the TPM version 2.0 for Windows 11, this result was bound to happen. As most of us Indians have a Jugar mentality and are very good in showcasing our resourcefulness and adaptability. Regarding addressing the most important question, which is, is this the year of Linux? Then I think despite this growth, we remain far from any sort of year of Linux. There is plenty of debate over why, but for example, as per the Linux's founder, Linus Torvalds, the lack of standardized desktop that goes across all Linux distributions has held back Linux adoption on desktop. But believe me, if Microsoft continues to move away from its core customers, maybe then we will actually have the year of Linux desktop. And believe me, I am eagerly waiting to see that. So that's it. Thanks for joining. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please check out our other videos on NixNexus as well and keep exploring the world of open source and Linux.